<laughs> I hope I surprised you guys. This is a nice surprise. Welcome. Really nice to have everyone join us uh, for my classes today. Norbert, how are you? And Hamid. Hi. Hi, guys. Hi. Can you guys, can you guys you? see what's in the back? I'm fine. Can you guys see what's in the back? Yes. I can see. Logo. Yeah. Yeah. It's nice. Uh, lesson for uh, Verb Girl. <laughs> yes, that is my superhero name. That's right. And I have to thank Norbert for that. Thank you, Norbert. Oh, Norbert, I think he got dropped, but he'll be back. Um, and we also have Ayat. Thank you, Hina. Nice to see you again. I'm fine. Nice to see you, too. Welcome back. You look great. Thank you so much. So do you. <laughs> thank you. You, you, all look, you all look awesome. You all look great. And I wanted to show you guys the Verbling wall and like the Verbling logo. This is my last day teaching at the Verbling office. So uh, is it painted? Is it a, a poster or? A no, it's actually it's like it's it's 3D. <laughs> it's like it's it's made with it's, cards. Uh, put it's, it on the wall. it's uh, letters and the mm -hmm. stuck it in the wall. Yeah, exactly. Oh, nice. It's very awesome. Yeah. Yeah, so the walls are blue in the office, as you can see. <laughs> All right, I mean, I yeah. I want to say from uh, now, uh, have a nice trip for uh, tomorrow. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Hamid. I hope so too. Long, 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 long trips. <laughs> um, I will also go to Antalya for International Congress tomorrow. We are a uh, same time traveler. Oh, uh, how far is that? Where you have to go? Uh, by bus, uh, nine or uh, ten hours. Wow, that's long. My my trip is also like, like twelve hours or something, something like that. <laughs> All right. Oh, so it looks like so it looks like everybody's here. Welcome, guys. Nice to have everyone join us. Norbert, what's up with your internet? I don't know. Can you see? Yeah. Me? Yeah. We can, no. We I can. You, your camera is off, right? No. Uh, no? Okay. Okay. Oh, yeah, now we can see you. I told you something like funky with my Google Hangout. I can't see you guys like moving. I have to click on your whatever. Yeah, we can see you now. All right. So, let's see. We have a couple of we have a couple of familiar students and a couple of new students. Welcome everyone. Is this anyone's first time on Verbling? Yeah. Verbling. Really? Ooh, so yeah, cool. I heard a very. Uh, me, <laughs> Is it cool? <laughs> Sorry, it's Juan. Yeah. Hi, Juan. Welcome. Hi, hi. Where are you from? I am from Mexico. Welcome. So, uh, this is your very first class. Here in Berlin, yes. Here in Berlin. Okay. So, Juan, because it's your first class, I'm gonna wel welcome you, guys. What do you want to see? Hip hop, a wave. Just my usual. Take note. Take note. Take note. What? <laughs> oh, he now lost his connection, I think. A little hip hop with what? Welcome, Juan. So, you haven't attended classes before on Verbling? No. That's awesome. So, I'm happy. I'm happy that you're here. All right. So, I welcome. Can, I can see you are very emotional. <laughs> Sorry? You are very energy people. Energetic. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yes, yes, I like to. Well, it's it's a Monday, so all I have like replenished my energy over the weekend. All right. So, welcome guys. This is a speaking class, and as you all know, I'm about to take a trip. Um, and I was uh, just Fina, wondering sorry to interrupt. Yes, David. Uh, take Where are you going? <laughs> uh, uh, I come. look <laughs> Everybody, can you guys see? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, do you see my photo? Yes, I can see your picture, David. <laughs> Wonderful, is isn't it? Yes, it's beautiful. It looks like the San Francisco. San Francisco. Yes, I saw. I saw. 
Lofa. Where are you going to? I am. Uh, I'm moving back to Canada. So oh, this is my Canada? yeah. This is my last day at the office. So I thought I'd show you guys the logo and like how pretty the office no, is. I know the. Because next time you see me, I'll be in a. I'll be in snow. <laughs> next time you see I, me, there'll I, be I, snow outside. I know the hymne in French. The what? The hymn, the your country. The yes. hymn. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Canada, Terre de nous a <laughs> oh, you know the French. You know the anthem in French. That's awesome. Yeah, our, our anthem is in French and in English. So, yes. uh, so uh, I was gonna say. So because I'm taking a trip, uh, I, I have to pack, and there's so much anxiety over like taking a trip. So I thought I'd I'd have a I'd have a class scheduled, and I get you guys to share how it is for you when you get ready to travel. So do you get anxious? Do you get excited? Or do you get nervous? Do you have any like horror stories from like I once took a trip and after that I stopped traveling because I had such a bad experience so um, I thought I'd get you guys to tell me your stories um, and uh, and how you feel about about traveling and what all you guys do to prepare for a trip okay I know a couple of you have taken some big trips in the in the past year or so I know David went to UK and Norbert went to the UK so I want to know how you guys prepared for those trips and like what happened the days before you took your flight All right so we're gonna be sharing it's going to be a speaking class uh, and yeah so don't be afraid to uh, to speak up share your stories and of course ask questions all right um, so what we'll do is we'll quickly start with introductions, all right? So we'll say our name, uh, say where we're from, and talk about, uh, why don't you tell us if you've ever taken a major trip somewhere? And then you can tell us the details like later on in class, all right? What so do you mean by major trip? Right. Sorry, Hi. Hayek? Actually, all right, so. What did you say, Ayat? I didn't get that. What did you mean by major trip? Oh, major trip, like if you ever took like a, like a flight somewhere or, you know, you have to pack suitcases or it can be even like moving cities. Like if you ever moved from one city to another or from one country to another. Does um, it mean for a long distance trip? Uh, something that required a lot of preparation. Ah, okay. Required, yeah. It required you to get ready for it. Yeah. So okay, I'll, I get, I get yeah, that's awesome. So I, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna say, can you, do you have the Wurbling window open? Can you close it? Because I can hear an echo coming from your microphone. So yeah, if anybody's Wurbling windows are open, just close them. Otherwise, there's like an echo, or just mute yourself. Okay. So welcome everyone. My name is Hina. I am your teacher. I am from Canada, and tomorrow I'm going back to Canada. This is my last day here in San Francisco with the Burberry. <laughs> um, my major trip was when I moved to Asia a couple of years ago. I moved to Singapore for a year, and it required a lot of preparation. Like, I remember I was so worried for like two months before I left, and it was just, it was just a lot of stress. All right? Um, so let's get started with David. Hi, David. Hello, my uh, my name is David from Barcelona, Spain. And also, when I try to travel, I I do the suitcase for um, one day to another day, and the travels are a uh, minimum minimum two weeks. Minimum two weeks. Okay. Wow. So, David, where where did you like travel to last? Was it Br Brighton? Brighton, Gran uh, Canary Islands. Mm -hmm. Depends. Canary, oh, Canary Islands. I've heard this. they're beautiful. Yeah, I have friends. That's awesome. All right. Thank you, David. Uh, next, let's get Arkim. Hi, Ekram. Ekram. Hi, Ekram. Hi, teacher. How are you? I'm fine. Okay, so go ahead and introduce yourself, Ekram. It's my second uh, class for you. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. You are too energetic. <laughs> energy. Uh, I get that a lot. Yes, energetic. Well, it's a Monday. I don't want to be like, oh, it's Monday. I'm so tired. Nice. <laughs> so I like to. Mm -hmm. And 
I went to Ukraine two twice mm -hmm. in uh, two, three years ago, mm -hmm. and my preparing is too exciting. <laughs> it's too exciting. Where are you from, Ekrem? I'm from um, Turkey, Istanbul. Turkey. Okay, awesome. Thanks, Ekrem. You can tell us all about how excited you get when traveling. Thank you. Uh, next, get next. Let's get LV. Okay, uh, teacher. Uh, nice to meet you. I'm not sure if this is my first time in your class. It's not. Name, I've yeah. seen you before. I've seen you before. <laughs> ah, okay, okay. Nice to see you. Uh, well, my name is Elvi Marsella. I'm speaking from uh, Venezuela. Yeah. That's awesome. So why don't you tell us, do you enjoy getting ready to travel or do you get anxious or do you get like nervous, scared, happy? How do you feel? Well, in in some uh, sense, in some way, mm -hmm. I think I'm used to traveling, yeah? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, because of my work, I need to travel uh, uh, very... Often. Yeah, very often, yeah. Mm -hmm. But it was really nice a long time ago. I went to, to England, to London, to practice mm -hmm. English, and it was a very nice experience because you discover you don't speak English well. So you <laughs> need to try <laughs> to improve your real English, yeah. Yeah, hey, I thought I spoke English, but then I went to an English-speaking country, and I don't know any English. I know yeah. that feeling. <laughs> I know yeah. that feeling. Thank you, thank you so much for that, LV. Um, next, let's get Ayat. Yeah. What's the question? Oh, so why don't you introduce yourself and tell us how you feel oh, when you get ready to yeah. travel? From Algeria. Yeah. From Algeria. Mm -hmm. And uh, what the. <laughs> Do you do you travel do you travel a lot, Ayat, or not? Yes, really? I do. I do. Yes, I'm. Uh, I'm now to to travel for uh, about one month. Oh, where are you going? To Paris. Wow. See, if it was me, one month before, I'd be like, "What clothes am I gonna take? What shoes am I gonna wear?" But I'm then I like stress. But uh, it's not my first time, so. Uh, to go to to UK and Belgium and France, man. Oh, okay. So that's awesome. That sounds like a sounds like an exciting trip you're about to take. I hope but you have this fun. time I wanna come. I will have something to do in Paris. Mm -hmm. I wanna see uh, whether Germany or Italy. So I will go uh, from this destination. Oh, okay. One of those calls. I don't know. I haven't make, made my mind. Made your yet. mind. That's awesome. Okay. Thank you so much for that, Ayat. And I can see there's quite a lot of you, a lot of people in the chat. So that's awesome. We have Mahmoud, Pola, Hazim. Hi guys. I'm sorry, not everybody can get in class, but you're more than welcome to um, to watch and leave your comments in the verb link chat if you have questions or if you want to say something. I'm just gonna say, Mahmoud. Can you like please type and speak in English? This is an English class, so please don't be typing in Turkish. Um, if everybody could speak in English and type in English, that would be best. All right. Thank you so much. Um, next, let's get Hamid. Yes. Hello, guys. I'm Hamid from Turkey, and uh, I traveled uh, UK, uh, Germany, and Belgium. Uh, hmm. Before the trip, I was very uh, nervous because uh, they uh, were my uh, first abroad experiences. Yeah. Uh, my parents also uh, were not uh, a, a lot of things mm -hmm. uh, from the, before the journey. Like Suvid, oh, okay, all right. So that's, like yeah. I, mm -hmm. Go ahead, go ahead, comment. Sorry, I want, I, why don't you finish? Uh, and uh, I was happy uh, for these uh, journeys. That's awesome. Thank you, Hamid. Uh, next, let's get our newbie, Juan. Hi, Juan. Hi, hi, teacher. Hi, everybody. This is Juan speaking from Mexico. Mm -hmm. um, well, I, I didn't travel so much, so 
my last travel was to Chile, where it was a flying two hours, two hours flight. So yeah, I was very nervous because we were to meet uh, to my sister-in-law parents. So oh, my oh God. <laughs> the in-laws, the yeah. in-laws family are called in-laws and I can totally understand how it feels like oh my god I have to meet these people who probably are going to be mean to me <laughs> so you yeah, met yeah, the in-laws yeah all my worries were in vain because they are very nice people that's awesome that was good that, that's a good story <laughs> all right thank you Juan uh, next let's get Mert hello hi <clears throat> Hello, I'm Mart and I'm, I'm from Turkey. So um, go ahead and yeah, so welcome. Is this your, I think this is your first time in my class, right? Mm, I, yeah, yeah, I guess, but mm, not in Berlin. Oh, okay, so welcome. Really nice to have you join us. Why don't you tell us, do you travel a lot? Um, actually, I don't travel so much, so I don't uh, have any stories, um, you know. Oh. Uh, all right. Uh, so, do you plan on traveling sometime in the future? Um. Yeah. This summer, I'm gonna go uh, abroad, I guess. But uh, it is not certain thing yet. Oh. Okay. So that's awesome. Welcome. All right. Thank you. Uh, I'd love to hear more about your trip uh, as we go on in class. Thanks, Mert. Uh, next, let's get Norbert. Hi, guys. I'm Norbert from Hungary. Mhm. Mm and what was the question? Oh, so do you? What, how do you feel when you travel? Before the tra travel, or yeah, before the travel, like a preparation time. I think I was, maybe I was shocked or something like that because I I I wasn't um, too nervous and I wasn't too excited. It was like um, a normal day. So it's like I, a normal I, uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, maybe I didn't want to believe that I, I will go to the UK or something like that. Oh, so you were like in shock. Maybe, yeah. Uh, okay, all right. Awesome. Thanks, Norbert. Uh, and last we have Shady. Shady? Yes. Hi, teacher. I'm Shady from Egypt. Nice to be uh, with you. And mm -hmm. welcome back, teacher. <laughs> and, Thank you. Uh, Thanks. Uh, and try to remember, uh, we can't speak while we are writing uh, because Google mute uh, microphone uh, for the person who, who is writing. Yeah, I know. Yeah, so if you guys don't know, if you type and you speak at the same time, you're muted by the Hangout automatically. Um, yeah, that, that's happening with me as well. It's, it's very annoying, but there's no way to turn it off, unfortunately. So just keep it in mind, all right? So go ahead, Shady. Thanks for that. Um, and go ahead. Why don't you tell us about how you feel preparing for travel? Shady. Okay. <laughs> uh, uh, I didn't travel before, but I hope to travel uh, for Kuwait, uh, Saudi Arabia. Mm -hmm. um, and if I wanted to travel uh, for a um, uh, Europe uh, country, I prefer to uh, travel uh, to uh, France. Um, I think he's a good uh, country. That's awesome. And have you have you traveled anywhere recently? No. Uh, no. Inside Egypt. Inside it's just inside Egypt. Okay. I I feel that even traveling within your own country can be very painstaking. Painstaking. Have you guys? Pains. Painstaking. Uh, yeah. Pain. Painstaking is like something that is not easy, something that requires a lot of effort. So people think that travel just has to be you're traveling abroad. Even if you're just traveling locally within your own country, it can be very painstaking. It can require a lot of preparation. What if you're moving cities? Yeah, that can be really, really stressful. So don't worry if you, if you haven't traveled abroad. Even traveling locally is, uh, is, quite, a, is quite an accomplishment, I feel. All right. So awesome. Oh, we also have Imad who just joined us. Welcome, Imad. Yeah. Hi, Anna. How are you? I'm uh, fine. How are you? And I'm great to hear that you are going back to your home country. It's very good news for, for yes. me. I think it's good. Yes, I I agree. The only the only downside is that it's still snowing in Canada. <laughs> <laughs> So it's like, it's so warm here today, like it's so hot 
and I think I'm gonna be like in snow tomorrow. So that's like the only thing that I can't get my head around. Where it's like tomorrow I'm gonna land and there's gonna be snow everywhere. <laughs> when will be there? Uh, two different, two different climates. Not, not right now. It's very like spring in the uh, in San Francisco, and you have hometown is like very cold. Or yeah, exactly. Yeah. I don't know what's going on up in Canada. Like it gets really warm, like two days, and then it starts snowing. <laughs> so like my mom will call me and she'll be like, "Oh, it's so warm," and like three days later, she's like, "It snowed last night." So, like in Hungary. Like in Hungary, exactly. So right now. We're transitioning into spring and summer, so it's a lot of rain, a lot of snow. Hopefully, it'll it'll be nicer in a couple of weeks. I hope so. <laughs> so, Imad, why don't you tell us? Have you taken any recent travels? Um, you know, my recent travel travel I left Syria. The problem is not the preparation preparation for the travel itself. The problem that uh, I have to shut down my office, I have to finish my work, I have to. Like make authorization uh, for my papers, and uh, more like more problematic problematic thing that I have to get or to gather some some money that has been uh, like investigated from previous works and yeah. Okay, There's so what you things. so for what the last you're minute, saying? I was like mm -hmm. fighting. <laughs> what yeah. you're saying is called wrapping everything up. Have you heard that expression? I've written it in Burbling chat to wrap things up or to wrap everything up. Have you guys to heard cover that? With paper. No, not cover with paper. It means to do all the little things that you have to do before you travel. So, like Imad said, it can get really stressful because I have to authorize people, I have to pay my bills, I have to do this. This is called wrapping things up. You guys know what wrap is, right? Like when you wrap a present. Like for example, yes, when you paper. get a gift, yeah, That's when you wrap it with paper. So this is an expression to wrap things up, to wrap everything up. This means to finish all the little tasks that can be very painstaking before you do something or go somewhere. So it's like next week I'm moving to Paris. I have to wrap everything up in San Francisco before I go. Meaning I have to make sure all my bills are paid, um, everything like my car has been paid off, or you know. Um, Everything in Paris is ready for me. So this is an expression to say I have all these little tasks that I need to do that I need to finish before I go before I go travel or before I go do something big. So Imad has uh, a lot of wrapping up to do before he travels. Yeah, I have a question. Uh, if I uh, let's say you owe me money mm -hmm. and I am going to take this money uh, from you before I I'll, uh, leave the country. Mm -hmm. So what is the name of this thing that I'm going to to collect my money from the people who owe me money or kind of that. What should I name? Recover. Maybe to well, recover money. Recover, recover money. money. Uh, recover is a little different. Recover is like if somebody robs a bank and you find that no. money and you bring it back to the bank. That is recovering it. That's a little different. So like uh, I have to like you, the people who owe you money need to pay you back. So pay back. Yeah, payback. Yes. Payback. Exactly. Payback. So you. Payback so, yeah, it's payback time. Exactly. Payback is when you owe. Is when you do something for someone or you give them money and then you expect something in return. So, for example, if you loan someone money, then you expect them to pay you back. So it's like it's payback time. So you can go up to these people and be like, "It's payback time. I want my money." <laughs> That's a little <laughs> gangster. You don't. You don't really say that. That's a little gangster. But. <laughs> So yeah, so you're uh, sorry. Go ahead, Aya. We say it's pay payback time with yeah. a gun. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. This is a gangster thing that is payback time. I want my money back. I mean, that'd be like if somebody was reluctant or not giving you your money, then you would say that. But that's basically what it is. Or you're just collecting your collecting your money uh, or just whatever. This there's, there's no really real expression for that. Uh, the big thing I would say is definitely a payback. Just about payback. Is it uh, uh, can does does it mean some? Does it mean payback? sorry? The revenge. Re yeah, it can mean revenge as well. If you say it in like a negative sense, that like you know it's payback, meaning you did something bad to me. Now I'm going to take revenge on you. So it's a, okay. it's a ver it's a versatile word. It's a versatile phrase. Okay. Do you have anything to pay back for Francis San Francisco before you leave? <laughs> no, 
Like bad memories. <laughs> Girl. <laughs> you know, it's not. It's not really. It's San Francisco is not really that far now that I realize it. It's um. But no, it's been it's been awesome. It's been like an awesome few months here, and uh, I'm definitely gonna miss it. So, but I'm excited. Like you said, I'm excited to go home. There's always like that. Uh, I'm gonna go home. So there's always like that feeling, and I'm definitely experiencing it. Okay, so I have a question for those of you. Even if you don't travel that much, when you do travel or when you do get ready to take a trip, so Imad said that it's super stressful for him to wrap things up. So he has to get everything done so he doesn't worry about it when he travels. So what do you think is the most difficult part of preparation? Like, is it packing your suitcase? Is it buying your ticket? Passport. Like, what do you think? Passport. David, do elaborate more on that. What's, so, what's wrong with passport? Uh, when, uh, when here in Barcelona, mm -hmm. you must uh, reserve uh, a day to make your passport and sometimes they, there are a lot of queue. There's a there's a long queue, a long yep. queue. Yeah. Okay. So what do you what so what do you mean? What do you mean you reserve a passport before you travel? Uh, a pass, uh, city. I mean uh, uh, to go to the police and make you uh, and do your visa. passport. Oh. Maybe visa. And maybe yeah. visa. Okay. Yeah. I yeah. Go visa. ahead. What's yeah, sorry. Teacher, um, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think I think it's it's uh, absolutely important uh, everything about getting visa. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, for instance, in my case, uh, first of all, uh, I need to make sure all my papers, my documents, are in order. Yeah, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so I, I go to the embassy uh, to embassy. ask uh, for information. Mm -hmm. uh, in order to arrange my travel, I think that process is is sometimes is difficult. It depends of the on the country you are going to uh, yeah. to. Yeah. Okay. This is what you mean. Painstaking is two word. Pain. So you're taking pain. It's like so difficult to do this. Exactly. Getting but your visa you know, is. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, I will tell you one thing. Uh, here in Barcelona, in my case, only is uh, to make the visa and the goodbye. So probably will be the next day, probably next month, depends oh, on the queue. Depends on the queue. Okay, and I, I'm sorry, LV, what about you? How long have you had to wait to get your visa? So David is saying it can be anywhere from a day to a month. What about yeah. you, LV? Yeah, I think uh, uh, that depends on the uh, political relation between uh, countries, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, for example, when I went to England, mm -hmm. it was, well, it, uh, 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 in my case, as a Venezuelan, mm -hmm. uh, I didn't need uh, any visa to, en to, to enter. In for, England, for England, okay, okay, yeah, yeah. But uh, I remember in the embassy, they told me uh, I would have a migration test uh, mm -hmm. at the airport, and it was so. I had a test. Uh, <laughs> I remember uh, I need to ask the migration officer for a translator because I wanted oh. to understand what uh, he. Uh, he was uh, asking me, yeah, oh, it, was, wow. a, it yeah. was a test in that case, but in other country, it's yeah. absolutely different. Uh, you can spend uh, about one year, eight, from yeah. eight to one year, waiting for your, for your visa as a tourist or as a resident in that country, yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow, that can be nerve-wracking. Do you guys know what nerve-wracking is? I'm writing it in chair. Mm -hmm. Nerve wracking. Have you heard that word? Yeah. Nope. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Ner nerve. Word. What does it mean? Nerve wracking. Um, I can't explain, but I heard it. It's when yeah. you have a, 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 a situation yeah. uh, that makes you nervous. Exactly. A situation that makes you nervous, like instantly. So, for example, if you go to like, if you go to England. And at the airport, they make they make you have a test, or they like 
interview you where it's like as they're asking you all these difficult questions you're not going to be like very calm right you're not going to be happy you're going to be like oh my god why are they doing this what's going on that's nerve wracking where you don't have any peace of mind so i that's one thing a lot of people they don't like traveling because they think traveling is very nerve wracking where it's just you have to take care of so many things and it's so stressful that they're just like i'd rather not travel so uh lv i can totally relate to to your situation i know i know yeah. what it feels like can you write it nerve wracking yeah sure okay thank you nerve wracking exactly wreck means uh, to destroy nerve. Nerve. nerve nerve yeah so your nerves so when you get nervous for example wrecking wreck is to destroy that's an it's a, it's a synonym to destroy so nerve wrecking is something that destroys your nerves so you don't have your cool you, yeah exactly it's like Oh my god, like you start sweating, you get nervous, you don't know what to say because people are grilling you. Do you guys know what it means to grill someone? It doesn't eh cook someone. To toast when you're writing with on this thing you. So oh yeah, okay, sorry. Yeah, so to grill someone. What do you guys think that means to grill? It doesn't mean to cook someone like to when you toast. grill. Are they grilling? Sorry, Hamid. Are they grilling? I did what? Barbecue, barbecue. Uh, barbecue. Okay, yeah. When you barbecue, you're grilling food, but to grill someone is an idiom. For example, if you go to the airport and you are asked 200 questions by security for no reason. They're like, "Where are you going? Why are you going? Who who do you know there? What's your business? Wait, I want to see your passport. I want to see your papers. Like, what what business you have going to so and so country?" This is called grilling someone. asking them questions and making them nervous for like yeah, just just teach, just to break them yeah teacher i think that situation is is not good in any sense it's terrible because yeah. you you know well mm -hmm. if you don't pass the migration test you will be sent to your country back at that uh, 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 exactly moment okay so you need to pass the the test so if that mm -hmm. is not nice yeah because everything depend on that test you are yes. uh, taking at that moment yeah yeah exactly uh, if you and if you don't pass because right. i want no well, well, well. a couple of people are talking at the same time so we have we have david uh, juan and shady so david go first hey, okay yeah, i was working at the airport from barcelona and if you don't pass that test that he said he will bring you back uh, then you can come back until 3 years minimum <gasps> oh so you're you're banned you're banned from coming back that's crazy what about what yes. about you juan what were you saying oh no i was trying to say that uh, it, okay they yes for um, attacks but uh if you are traveling in i don't know maybe for work for relaxing vacation mm -hmm. and you ask the question and the every text says Uh, there is no be a problem because you are doing the things well so yeah because as you say that makes me you nervous nervous But, uh, yeah. nervous mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. But w when you go to the uh, immigration officer and they asking where you travel for or what you gonna do mm -hmm. oh my God, there is no problem for me because I, i said only the truth so mm -hmm. no problem yeah. And it, exactly and it's it's not really like you're doing something bad that's just their job right like when you go to immigration it's part of their job to grill you and to like make you nervous because if you have nothing if you have something to hide then you'll get nervous and they'll be like oh this person is nervous but if you have nothing to hide you just answer truthfully then everything's okay right shady mm -hmm. what were you saying yes um try to be is while uh, someone trying to grill uh, you Mm -hmm. because um i think uh, to be nervous is uh, bad uh, for yourself uh, mm -hmm. not saying uh, wanted to get you uh, be nervous and uh, but uh, i wanted to say is the most uh, problem while you are trying to travel abroad uh, i think have to blame for your trip or for travel try to blame uh, for it as uh, the most uh, important and um, 
difficult uh, thing is uh, uh, the transport uh, inside the travel and inside the trip, uh, the places which you wanted to travel. Uh, this uh, is the most thing uh, is difficult. Yeah, and we're going to talk about that in, in a second. Thanks, Shady. Uh, and we also had Ayat. Ayat, you were trying to say something? So, uh, curious about what is immigration? Immigration. In, in UK, three times, mm -hmm. they check your passport. Mm -hmm. And you, they, if you question where you go in, you say to the hotel, uh, Okay. Uh, never seen a uh, uh, pressure or uh, in UK. Okay. All right. And no, Norbert. What do you mean by yeah. immigration test? We're, uh, we're going to talk about that just in a little bit. Norbert, you have something to say, and then we'll talk about what going through immigration is. Go ahead, Norbert. Yes, I wanted to say that uh, in the European Union, mm -hmm. so when uh, the to go abroad in the, in the European Union, uh, it's uh, free. So you don't have to go to the immigration office. Yeah. And I only need uh, one card, uh, ID, ID card. Yeah. And I can, ID. I can, go, yeah, ID card, and I go through the security. Part. Yeah, exactly. So it was easy. It was easy to me. So mm -hmm. I, I didn't have to uh, nerve wracking. I didn't. Uh, I didn't get nervous. I. It was. Yeah. It was not nerve wracking. Yeah. And I, I didn't have paperwork and. So on. It's called the Schengen space. Schengen, sorry, Schengen visa? Is that what you're saying, Schengen Aya? Visa, yes. Schengen uh, visa, you, yeah. With one, is it all seven or eight? I don't know how many. No, there's there's more countries in the Schengen visa, I believe. So Schengen visa is, uh, for those of you who don't know, it's for non-European residents. So, for example, if you have a passport that requires you to uh, have a visa everywhere you go, you can get a Schengen visa for Europe. Um, and there's like Schengen, that's how you say it, Schengen visa. And on, on that visa, you can travel to lots of European countries without getting individual visas. So, for example, if you get a Schengen visa, you can go to UK, Portugal, Spain, France, Italy. Yeah, you don't need a visa for e Yeah, go ahead, I. UK is not Schengen. If, uh, UK is not, not Schengen? Okay. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm not too sure what's on a Schengen visa. Like, for example, I have a Canadian passport. And on a Canadian passport, you don't need a visa to, to travel anywhere in Europe. But, for example, if you have um, an Indian passport or apparently maybe a Turk, I'm not sure if it's a Turkish passport too, then you need a visa to go to all the individual countries in Europe. So instead of getting, like, lots of different visas on your passport, you get one Schengen visa, and that allows you to go to all the countries that are included under the Schengen visa okay so it's really it's really helpful for people who don't have a who don't have a strong passport okay like some like the political situation of your country dictates how strong your passport is so for example if you have a UK American Canadian passport you mostly don't need visas to travel there are like very few Sorry, countries Hina. that you need visas to yeah Except go ahead, Hina. Country, Hina. Sorry, we sorry. Need visa to my country. Algeria? Yes. American? Really? Really? Or, yes, we are strong. If you go uh, to Morocco or Tunisia, the, our neighbors, mm -hmm. you don't need visa. Okay. But American, they have the same uh, treatment mm -hmm. as they do to us when we go. It's the same treatment. Yeah, a but lot of countries. Yeah. That's called yeah. that's called reciprocating, right? So it's like you oh, have, you have to to have a fee visa to to get Algeria. Yeah, exactly. And there's I think on a Canadian passport you can travel to a hundred and sixty two countries without visa. There's a hundred and ninety. There's a hundred and ninety. Sorry, there's like a hundred and ninety two or hundred and ninety three countries in the world. And you can travel to 162 of them without a visa if you have a Canadian passport. It's a little higher for the U.S. It's like 165. And I think England is like 166 or 167. So exactly, the stronger your passport is, the more likely it is you won't need a visa to travel. So, okay, immigration. Who has gone through immigration before? Wow. 
What is immigration? That's Talk what we're going to talk about. Juan, have you gone, you've gone through immigration before? Yeah, many times. So it okay. is very, very nervous working. It's very, very nerve-wracking. Exactly. So immigration... I remember once... Yeah? Mm -hmm. oh, okay, sorry. No, no, no. I go ahead. Go ahead. Once, yeah. once time when they apart me from the line. So, oh my God. What's wrong? So they just checked me, my passport, and... and uh, they ch checked me out all from the toad to the air and some uh, they made me wait for one hour I think uh, so suddenly they say okay no, this is no problem uh, can you go ahead oh my god <laughs> <laughs> but meanwhile I was very very nervous yes I can totally understand so um, immigration is usually you go through immigration when you are traveling internationally so for example if you are if you're American and no no okay if you're Canadian I've gone through immigration uh, in Canada so in Canada if I am flying to the US for example I flew to San Francisco from Toronto right so at the Toronto International Airport I got there I checked my luggage and then I had to go through immigration because I had to go through U.S. immigration, not Canadian, because before you get on your plane to get to the U.S., the U.S. needs to clear you in Canada, where it's like, okay, you are safe to go, like, it's okay for you to travel to the U.S. So what you do is there's like a line that says immigration, all right? So anytime you leave Canada, you need to go through immigration to be cleared to fly internationally, okay? If you guys have ever flown internationally, you would know that flying international is a lot more stressful than flying locally. All right, like if you were flying within your own country, that's not stressful, right? But if you were flying abroad, that's a lot more stressful and you have to go through immigration because your country needs to clear you to fly abroad. So when you go through immigration, there's like all these immigration officers, they're like, oh, so you're leaving the country. Why? Where are you going? They need to check, they, they, they check your name through a database to see that you are not a criminal like you're not a criminal who's going to fly to another country so immigration is done for all these reasons to make sure that you are safe to fly and you're safe to travel like they're checking you and your record so if you're like an if you're like a criminal or if you have like a criminal record or if you are wanted by the police when you go through immigration all of that will pop up and you will not be allowed to fly okay so when for example when I am when I'm coming to the US, I go through US customs, customs, okay? So after I, after I, after I clear immigration, I go through US customs where the US is like, okay, you are authorized to fly into the US. So you can understand, Ayad, why it's so stressful because the country that you are leaving is, it grills you a lot to make sure that you are a safe person to travel abroad. Do you understand? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Have, yeah. So, uh, Imad, have you ever gone? I'm assuming you would have gone through immigration when you go to Egypt and Syria. Uh, no, between between Egypt and Syria, it was yeah, it was uh, very easy because uh, the immigration office is actually in the uh, in the Egypt uh, uh, airport, and the questions was very very easy. Like, what's the purpose of your visit and kind of that. Because yeah. Because we have. Like there is kind of agreements uh, between both of our countries. But if I'm going to travel to United States, for example, the immigration office is kind of nightmare. And exactly. You name yeah. it. You name it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Same with me. Like Canada and the U.S. have an agreement, so our immigration is really fast. There's like two or three questions. They're like, where do you live? Why are you going to the U.S.? And when will you come back? Like that's it. We just get asked three questions and then like we go. But you're right. If you were like flying from maybe Asia or from, a, or from Africa or, from another, or from, from another part of the world, then they would ask you a lot more questions. So immigration is like, it depends on where you're coming from, what the status of your country is. So, and depending on all of that, your immigration can be very easy or very difficult. And it really, it really is unfortunate um, that uh, it's not easy to travel. Yeah, go ahead. Do you know that they have uh, kind of checked you because uh, the first time we, when I got to the USA, uh, 
it was like you said a, a lot of questions mm -hmm. but nowadays they only check my visa and you can go ahead so maybe they you are a wreck or something like that yeah they've become lenient have you guys know what do you guys know what lenient is lenient no it means no. it means not so strict like for example a few years ago traveling to the US was very difficult right like you couldn't get a visa you couldn't travel now they've gotten a little more lenient meaning they're not that strict okay so for example security sorry what did you say Ayan? they became soft they, yeah exactly when you're not that strict so for example like five years ago it was super difficult to travel to the US but it's not it's still difficult but not that much so they've become lenient lenient is like when you're when you're when you become a little soft and you're not as strict or as hardened in your rules okay maybe Norbert you maybe it's sorry. because of, your, uh, of uh, your... uh, I'm, I'm not too sure what you're saying uh, I your internet connection is very is very weak it's breaking in and out and Norbert what did you say okay okay so when when you were in Asia Mm -hmm. um, you had to go to the immigration uh, when you l left the country? Yes. So when I was leaving Canada, I was going to Singapore. So I went through immigration because I was going internationally. So yes, I went... But after yeah. after mm -hmm. that, when you went to other countries? Oh, yeah. So when Asia? I, yeah. When I moved to Singapore, like when I got to Singapore, I had to go through immigration because I was coming on a work permit, right? Like when I moved to Singapore, I was moving there for a year. So when I came back, when I came to Singapore, um, I got my visa, and then I had to go for immigration because I had to get cleared to get my work permit. But if I was just tr going to Singapore to travel, then I wouldn't ne have needed to go through immigration because everybody who comes to Singapore goes through the same procedure. Um, do you guys know what a visa on arrival is? No. No? Visa on arrival? Okay. Yeah, it's kind of stamped. Uh, on the, but it's temporary, not uh, for that long time. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's a good way to explain it. So when you guys say you need to get visas, what do you do with your passport? So if anybody's ever gotten a visa for another country, what, what have you had to do? We have to wait. Yeah? And you send your passport somewhere, right? Yes. Yeah. So yeah. Put it in the uh, don't know uh, in uh, yeah. the embassy. Mm -hmm. and exactly. We wait for the, mm -hmm. the we have the appointment. We give them mm -hmm. sort of uh, what they what what requested document, and yeah. we wait. Is for France, example, and for UK. That's okay. it. The yeah, that's exactly right. So when you apply for a visa, you mail your passport, right? You send, for example, if I want to go to Algeria, I am a Canadian, I have to go to Algeria, I would mail my passport to the Algerian embassy in Toronto, all right? I will apply, I'll say I am traveling to Algeria and I would like a visa, right? So I'll give them my passport, they'll have an appointment for me, and I'll go, I'll have an interview, and then they'll approve or decline my application, right? They'll say, yeah. okay, you've been accepted. So here, here is your, so we're going to stamp, we're going to put your visa in your passport, and we'll give you your passport back, right? So when I get yeah, my passport, there's a just, visa on it, right? Yeah, teacher. <laughs> just tell them okay. that you're not an Algerian student, they will give you the <laughs> Awesome. And what, what were you saying, LV? Yeah. Teacher, uh, I had an amusing experience one day, yeah? Okay. Uh, I went to Mexico City to visit mm -hmm. some friends of mine, yeah? Mm -hmm. When I was at the airport, before going through the uh, migration desk, one migration police a woman take me to uh, an strange uh, room. Yeah. Yeah. I, I I needed to to wait uh, for for a long time. Yeah. And I I I, I asked them why I was there because yeah. all of my paper, passport, and visa uh, were, were in order. order. Yeah. Yeah. I think after three hours, 
I realized the problem was they didn't, didn't believe I was from Venezuela. Yeah. Uh. They, yeah. They they thought I was from Asia, maybe from Taiwan. Or yeah? the Philippines or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because I look like I was born in that country. In Southeast yeah? Asia. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So I, 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 I told them I'm from Venezuela. My passport and my visa is illegal. Yeah, yeah. It's not illegal. Yeah. yeah? But after six hours in mm -hmm. that room, uh, they understood everything in my document it was uh, okay and they permitted me to to to, to enter in mexico city yeah but yeah. that was really uh, amazing yeah because and the confusion yeah, about him. my <laughs> my country yeah yeah and sorry lb you you want to ask a question or you want to say something no uh, no that that's that is all okay uh, sorry no not lb not uh, lb uh juan sorry go ahead yeah, yeah. I, I try to answer to Erby because, uh, like he said, they uh, maybe for your appearance or your look, they tell you. Uh, once when I returned from Chile, mm -hmm. don't even uh, uh, let me uh, pass me that I am Mexican. What's happened with you, man? Yeah. <laughs> I am Mexican. I am living all my life here. What what's the problem? No, no, mm -hmm. no, no. Because uh, your paper maybe has a problem. I don't know. The the thing happened. But uh, the curious thing here in Mexico is that we have uh, uh, entrance for people who comes from South America. Mm -hmm. So they are very very strict. With that. Very strict laws, exactly. They're not yeah. lenient uh, with that. I, I, and, and yeah, um, so I, I was actually saying that, so that is the visa application process, right? When you mail your passport and you get a visa on it, right? A visa on arrival is when you do not need to get prepare for a visa before you go to a country. You get the visa when you, when you go there. You so go, for example, yeah. so for example, for Canadians, most of the countries, our visa on arrival. So, for example, if I go to Thailand, um, I don't have to get a I don't have to get a visa before from the Thai embassy. All right, I can just buy my ticket for Thailand and I can go. When I get to Thailand, when I get to the airport, the immigration there will look at my passport. They'll say, "Oh, you have a Canadian passport. You don't need a visa to come here." They'll stamp a visa on my passport. That is a visa on arrival. Okay, so most countries that have that have a good political and economic situation, they get visas on arrival. So visas can be very expensive, right? Like you can pay like hundreds of dollars for a visa depending on where you're going. So this way you don't pay anything. Like when you get to a country, they stamp your passport, give you a visa on arrival and that's it. You don't have to prepare for a visa, get your passport ready, get your papers ready, none of that. I have a question, uh, Hina. Yeah. You... Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Uh, to the to the embassy, do you may go with your? Do you don't hand it you? Because in my country we have to be present. You have to be present for what? Again, I can't I can't understand your question because your voice keeps breaking in and out. Like it's um, like. There is a problem. Yes. Why don't you turn your video off? If you turn your video off, it might be easier. Okay. I was, so for saying, I was saying, if we mm -hmm. have to visa, mm -hmm. we have to uh, uh, make appointment and to be present in person. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. So that's a visa application. The, if you make an appointment and you go to the embassy, you have to get the visa before you go to that country. That's what I'm saying. Uh, like, I don't need to do that. I always get visa on arrival. So I never mm -hmm. have to do it. Yeah. You said you said you made it. So do you mail the, the passport to the embassy? But it's no. in a mail. No, I only mail it if I have to like if I was going to Algeria. Apparently I need a visa to go to Algeria. So if I was going to Algeria, then I would mail my passport. But if I was going anywhere else in Europe, for example, I I can just buy my ticket and go. I don't need to mail my passport anywhere. I just go there. Like when I land in Paris. They look at my passport. They'll stamp a visa on arrival, which is just a stamp, and that's it. You're allowed to walk in. Uh, and this is this is true for most 
European and North American countries. So if you have a European passport or an American passport, a Canadian American, this is true for most of for most people from these countries. Sebastian, what is it like in Chile? Like when you travel to other parts of South America, do you get visa on arrival or do you have to apply for a visa in advance? I gotta go. Thank you, thank you for everything, teacher. Bye bye. Oh, you're welcome. Thanks, Swan. I hope to see you again. Me too. Bye bye. Bye. Sebastian, are you there? Sebastian. Yes, okay. <laughs> yes, I'm here. Okay, go ahead. So, Sebastian, <laughs> um, when you travel, yeah, when you travel to other parts of South America, what is it like? Do you get visa on arrival, or do you apply for a visa? No, actually, if you. If you are from South America, you don't need a visa or a passport. You just mm -hmm. need your ID. So any part of South America. Any part of South America, and oh. I think I think mm -hmm. that in 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 Chile's case is also Spain. I think I'm not sure. Oh, okay. So you just you just take your ID and your passport, and that's it. You don't need to do any preparation. Yeah. Okay, we do not yes. need a visa here in South America. That's amazing. I had no idea. Like, everybody knows that in Europe, because of the European Union, Norbert, right? You don't need a visa to travel to other countries yes, within, yes. within the European yeah. Union, right? Um, yes, yeah, so exactly. So I, I had no idea that it was the same in, uh, in South America. That is really, really cool. Um, here in, uh, in North America, like 10 years ago, if you were Canadian, you didn't need to have a passport to go to the US. Like, for example, a lot of Canadians, they just drive to the US because we have a border, right? If you were driving to the US, you didn't, you didn't need the passport. You could just, you just had your ID that said you were Canadian, that's all you needed. You did not need a passport or anything. Um, but of course, like the US changed this laws a few years ago. So now everybody who goes to the US has to have a passport. You cannot travel to the US without a passport, even if you're like, even if you're like British born or whatever, you need to have uh, a passport. For me, passport is very important because I tend to forget it. <laughs> Peter. Uh, yeah. Passport and the money. Yes. Peter, what are you saying? Uh, I wanted to ask you b because I was listening to your class early on. Mm -hmm. uh, you said something. Uh, uh, did I get that right? Uh, you have American uh, immigration officers in Toronto in the airport? Yes. Ah. Customs. It's called oh, U.S. Customs. That's interesting. Yeah. It's weird sure. because, uh, be, because it's, it's unusual. Be, be, it's, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Americans on, on Canadian soil. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I've only seen that uh, before uh, because I'm from Germany and, and uh, from time to time I travel to the States. And they had, uh, uh, the last time I traveled there a couple of years ago, they, they had American immigration officers in Amsterdam at the airport and they yeah. were asking all these questions did you pack your suitcase yourself and blah 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 mm -hmm. exactly and the thing is now you go to the states no matter where you're coming from you always have to go through US customs it's not US immigration it's a little different it's customs um, so in Toronto uh, we have immigration so you leave Canada and then you go to US customs so for now I was moving here, I had like US officers ask me, why are you going to the States? Like what's your business there and all that stuff. Um, and that's just, that's procedure now. Like that's what happens mm -hmm. when you are going to the US. That's their law now to come there. All right. So it's uh, exactly, like, we didn't have it very t until very, very recently. There's like a new part of the airport that's been built for US customs. So yeah, it's very strange. Um, and I agree. Uh, what about, what about currency? Do you guys get, like if you're traveling to another country, do you get money converted before you go or when you get to the country? That's cheaper, I think. What is cheaper, Norbert? If you do it in your own country. If you do it in your own country? Okay. What about, what about everyone else? What else do you, what do you guys do? Do you do it in your own countries or when you go to the next country? For example, in Turkey, uh, I want if I want to go to uh, UK, UK money uh, very expensive in Turkey. Pounds. Uh, yeah. Approximately uh, one English money equals uh, three Turkish money. One one British pound. Yes, one British pound uh, equals almost uh, 
Tabii yani, Türk işler az. So Turkey doesn't Turkey doesn't use the euro. Lira. Uh, no, but the euro, like for example, uh, like Spain, France, Italy, they use the euro, no. like that's their currency. So Turkey does not use the euro. They have no, no formally, uh, but we can uh, use it. Oh, so you you accept both. What's Turkish money called? What's Turkish currency called again? Turkish lira. 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 Okay, that's yeah. That's but, I usually yeah. Go ahead. But usually the cheapest way uh, in the UK, I know that because I lived there, is uh, if you can uh, use a debit card and withdraw money from, from a cash machine. That's usually yeah. the, the best exchange rate you can have in the UK. Yeah, that's true. I, I haven't traveled to the UK uh, recently, but I don't know. But when I was coming to the US, I went to my bank in Canada and I got money exchanged. Because like I, banks, I don't know, banks ha say they have the best exchange rate, but sometimes they don't. Like they, they say it's the best rate, but not really. Like it's so strange. Best for them. La best for last them. time I, yeah. mm -hmm. I exchanged 100 uh, US dollars and I got something like 65 euros for that. That's that is such a ripoff. That's a ripoff, yeah. Yeah, that's such a ripoff. Exactly. Like same with me. Like I went to my bank and I like for convenience sake, I got like a hundred Canadian dollars changed to US dollar, and I got like something like ninety, ninety four, or ninety five. But then I got US dollar converted back to Canadian, like a hundred US dollars, and then I got ninety four Canadian again. I was like, how does this work? Like no matter how much and which way I'm going, I'm still losing money. So conversion is really funny, and currency exchange is really strange. Sometimes so, you, they take commission. Yeah, exactly. And my bank's like, there are no fees. This is a this is a free transaction. I'm like, then where is the money going? <laughs> like, why am I getting ripped off? <laughs> don't trust the banks. No, don't trust the banks. Yeah, don't trust the banks. I was like, I trusted you guys with my money, and you're ripping me off. <laughs> All right. Okay. This is actually the end of this class. Thank you guys Thank so you, much. Nina. Uh, I actually am teaching, oh, you're welcome, Ayad. Uh, I'm actually teaching the next class as well. We are going to be taking a tour of a city in Turkey, Izmir. Tur uh, Hamid, have, have you heard of that city, Izmir? Yes, I will yes. share my, uh, some, uh, th some things about it because That's I awesome. have a relative in there. That's awesome. So we have a student, Eri. And he is going to be taking us on a tour of Izmir. So what Sebastian did with Santiago and what Norbert did with uh, Budapest, we are going to get a student from Turkey take us on a tour around the city in Turkey. All right. I so wish, I wish you could listen. I have to go. Oh, okay. Well, that's okay. I I hope to see you maybe, next time. All right. Yes, okay. maybe attend. Do you have another uh, session uh, late? I, I, not today, but I, I, I'm teaching other classes next week. So make sure you check okay. back on my Facebook because uh, I, I post my schedule there. All right? Okay. Thank you, Hina. Okay. No, well, you're welcome. Thank Bye, you. everyone. I'll be back in my...